Now, one of the big issues with uh, tackling the climate crisis is to convince the average person that they need to sacrifice much. Their lifestyle has to go down. They need to pay more taxes. They need to stop eating so much meat and start consuming the creepy crawlies. And many, many more. But we have many actors and politicians and important people that lecture us how important it is to change our lifestyle, to downgrade our standards of living. So it's to no one's surprise when those people happen to be hypocrites. So I'm going to throw this immediately out to the audience and say, how many of you are driving an electric vehicle at the moment? One, two, three, four. So I would say that probably constitutes less than 5% of the persons uh, sitting here in this room. Now, I'm not going Pikachu face over this because it is expected. I mean, on one hand, throughout human history, the elites have advocated for the peasants to lower their standards of living so that the elites can uplift theirs. And on the other hand, you kind of know the type of entourage that goes to the World Economic Forum. Probably more than half of them don't give a flying fuck about the things that are being discussed there. But it is a good opportunity to network. Like you have some of the richest people in the world that go in a place and you can talk to them. You can cut business deals and it doesn't take any more money or effort in organizing these things because, well, everyone is at the same spot. So it doesn't really surprise me, as I mentioned before, the fact that the people at the World Economic Forum don't give a shit about the climate. What does surprise me, however, is that there are so many people on Twitter that are defending this hypocrisy. And these people on the Twitter don't have any skin in the game. I don't think like they're paid shills or anything like that. I, I, I just think that they have the tism. I don't know how else to explain it. It's like when you, when you see the hypocrisy and the people at the top unwilling to even do the most utter basics of what they're advocating for. And yet you still defend that. Why? Why are you doing this? So obviously you got like some people that are uh, making fun of what was seen here. But then you have like, seeing as less than 1% of vehicles are electric vehicles, that this room has five times more the uptake is not terrible. Like first of all, the reason there are so few electric vehicles it's because they're incredibly expensive. I think the cheapest one is around $50,000. So expecting the peasantry to purchase electric vehicles, which is what the World Economic Forum and even Democrats in the United States are advocating for, is literally telling people, like, stop being poor. Just stop being poor. Just buy an electric car, you bigot. Just stop polluting. Stop being poor. So the reason people don't have electric cars, the, the main reason is because they're very expensive. But secondly, you would expect the richest people in the world, because you have the 1% of the 1% that can attend Davos to begin with. If I'm not mistaken, it's around uh, $10,000 just a ticket, probably more. So you have the 1% of the 1% that you would expect that all of them have electric cars because they can afford it. And they're very concerned about the environment. So maybe they want to set an example. Maybe they want to encourage the electric car industry to keep producing because that's how it works. But no, no, they, they don't have electric car. I remember this was also asked of uh, the U.S. president of Joe Biden. Like, does he own an electric vehicle? And Psaki said, it's like, well, he's the president. He doesn't drive. He's got uh, chauffeurs and people driving for him from the taxpayer money. And it's like, well, that's all well and good, but, you know, you're lecturing other people to change their lifestyle. You would think like a PR campaign where you're willing to show. I mean, if you're the president of the U.S., you can literally say, yeah, I, I want an electric vehicle, you know, like for the White House. I just want to show it to the public because I'm all for green energy and shit. And, and... No, they're not doing that. This is also something interesting that some people pointed out. I think Tucker Carlson said it as well. I think it's not so much about forcing you to get an electric car. I think that the oligarchs don't want you to have the means of transportation, except maybe public. They just want complete control and be able to restrict you. You will own nothing and be happy. I mean, throughout the Middle Ages, like, this was the thing. You know, like a great reset, like a factory reset would push you back to the Middle Ages. 
where the peasantry wasn't allowed to travel unless they had permission from their lord. But think about it, right? Like, let's assume that most people don't have cars and you just have public transportation. In fact, this is actually written in Klaus Schwab's book. You know, it's called the World Economic Forum, but it's very little to do with economy. It's a lot of conspiracy theories and stuff. And he actually says that in the perfect future, there would be only public transportation and they would have like these areas that, that would be green areas, right? Where they would be protected from mankind. So the, pop, the number of people on earth would go down and you'd have like the cities and, and the places where people live and you, they have public transport connected to one another. And then outside the city is just like a green lush environment, like, like a jungle-esque, if you will, environment where nature is being protected and stuff. Um, and and I, I guess like that would work if people don't have their own cars. But what's more worrying is that we can already see this in China. Like every single person has um, a digital ID. And if the Chinese government deems that a person is problematic, whether because he's like a journalist that talks against the powers that be or uh, because uh, he might just be a politician that, that is trying to gain too much power, they, they can just disallow that person from using the public transport. Like, you don't need gulags anymore. You don't need prisons. You you just say, okay, well, this is persona non grata. He can't use public transport. Like, even if he has money, he uses his credit card, and it just doesn't allow him to, to purchase a ticket. And he's completely stuck because there's no cars. There's a, right? You only have public transport. Another person here is saying it's unclear on your point. You could be against electric cars simply because they are on the other side of the vehicle energy spectrum from gas oil industry. Or you could be showing that the percentage of ordinary people who care about car transition is vastly larger. No, they're, like they're wealthy people, okay? Like they constantly talk about carbon emissions and shit, and they drive private jets to reach Davos. How does that make any sense? And they don't own electric cars, but they want you to own an electric car. Is that like? I'm I'm not even talking about whether or not you want to fix global warming. But what I am saying is, don't you find it odd that the people coming up with the solutions for the problem and are the most concerned about the problem are, are the ones that don't take any measures to fix the problem? Like, if you look at the people who literally care about global warming, overwhelmingly, the oligarchs, like the people in power, the ones at Davos, they're, they're talking about this shit nonstop. The average Joe doesn't talk about this as much. Like, when I go out, at a pub or I meet people on the street or I talk to my hairstylist or my taxi driver. They don't care about this. You know, they care about other things like, oh, my God, uh, the conflict in Ukraine. Uh, Russia is not pumping gas to Europe anymore. The food prices are going up. How am I going to put food on the table? You know, th those are the concerns that the average Joe is having. So, yeah, I mean, if you keep going through all of these, um, you're going to find like many, many people like this one. How is this a cell phone? Right, like many people that are just outright defending the hypocrisy of the World Economic Forum. And this is what I don't understand. Like, I understand why the World Economic Forum is hypocritical. I don't understand why average people on Twitter are defending them. Like, what, what, what are they gaining? Why are they doing this? It makes absolutely no sense. Like, if you're for the environment, you, you should advocate. It's like, no, they are the first that should be using electric cars. Like, if you're an actor or, or any type of celebrity, you should only use an electric car because you can afford it. Let me know what you guys think, though, and I'll see you in the comment section. Take care.